Hi, my name is Bernadette McDonald, and I'm the host of What Is Your Real Name? by uh, adoptees from Quebec, uh, Kresh. And our guest today is Kathy Beresford, and she is a search angel, but a search angel helping her husband find his lineage. So we're going to learn about how that came about. Welcome, Kathy. Hi, Bernadette. Um, and I just kind of kept kept looking, kept looking, kept looking, couldn't find anything until a half brother showed up. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, and um, I contacted him, and um, turned out he was probably related through their father. Okay. Um, did a little more digging, found out some sisters' names, and through Facebook found a sister that was super helpful. Wonderful. She Wonderful. was amazing. She was amazing. Uh, so his name was Carl, and um, I kind of assumed by his profile and everything, he spoke French, so I started communicating with him in French, which kind of the benefit of me growing up in Montreal. I was able to, you know, do some communication in French. Um, and he goes, oh yes, this does sound like we've found a half sibling match here. And uh, he started to tell me about his father, okay. which we are, we at that time were assuming was also Joe's father because he says my mother never had any other children. She's yeah. still She's still alive, and I know that, you know, she never gave anybody up. Mm -hmm. um, and he says, but I don't know if he's alive or dead. He says, I haven't seen her, him in many years. We've not had much to do with each other. You know, mm -hmm. it was not one of those situations where they were close growing up or anything. Exactly. But then he tells me about a whole bunch of sisters, half sisters, his, that were children of Sebastian. And Sebastian is the father. Okay. They were children of his. And um, he said, he gave me a list of names. So I trot onto Facebook and I look for them all. So and were all I, the sisters younger than the two brothers? Uh, Carl is the youngest. Okay. Joe, my husband, was the oldest. Okay. Joe happened before Sebastian got married. Okay. Carl happened after the separation of that marriage. So they're, they're like bookends um, mm -hmm. to, that he had during marriage. So he gave me the names of the sisters he knew of. And I looked, them, I looked for them and sent them all messages like, you know, I might know your half brother. None of them responded. And then I found a picture on one of their pages saying, yeah. oh, my, my beautiful sister, Florence. And I'm like, that's well, not that a name. Sounds familiar, yeah. You didn't give me that name. Oh, okay. But I'm like, okay. I went and looked up Florence and she responded within 30 minutes. Wow. Going, yeah, my name used to be Sylvie, which is the name he gave he me. Gave you. Yeah. <laughs> so I found Florence. What a wonderful woman. She was so charitable and so sweet right from the beginning. She goes, oh, yes, it's very possible he had more children than we know about just because of who he was. <laughs> yeah, there might be a few more secrets out there. There might be. We never know. Uh, so she, she and I started communicating. She started sending me pictures of all the other sisters and of a brother. Oh, um, how wonderful. Yet another brother. Um, and I'm starting to see family resemblances. Perfect. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's my son. Was your husband finally seeing them too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. When I found the picture of the brother, which we met, we still haven't met, the brother and compared it to my son, Oh my gosh. <laughs> Some heavy jeans going on there, eh? They have the same long, skinny neck, same jaw. I mean, it's just wow. it's crazy. 
so she started, you know, communicating with me and I'm trying to get Joe involved, but she's speaking French. She speaks more English than the rest of the family does. Okay. So it's easier to communicate with her. Mm-hmm. And then she goes, so this summer, it's my father's 85th birthday. Do you want to come? <gasps> yes, I do. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Uh-huh. I had already been planning on going to Canada with my two youngest children just to go see family. I have, I have family in Ottawa and Halifax and they're all over the place. Mm-hmm. I was going to go anyway. And I was going to happen to be there during the time of Sebastian's birthday party. Nice. So Joe ended up just flying up for the weekend and we got to meet everybody. Beautiful. It was amazing. It was amazing. So warm and so welcoming. Yeah. We're just so warm and welcoming. Sadly, uh, Sebastian, the father, um, he's in the, he, at the time was at the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. Okay. Dementia. Um, he kept needing to be reminded who Joe was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your son and he well, went it's understandable yeah yeah this is you know who's his mother and at the time we still didn't know you know and we don't know can you maybe give us a clue <laughs> <laughs> how close are you dad anybody yeah. <laughs> so, yeah we really never you know from him we never we never so how, how did it how did it feel and look and uh, with your husband meeting him for the first time it was amazing. It was it was so friendly and so familiar in some yeah. way. Yeah. You know, these are people I've never met. But yet there was that sisterly feeling because it was only the sisters and Carl who were able to come. The, the other brother was not able. He lived pretty far away. Okay. And it was her sister that lived pretty far away. Yeah. Be the one that, um, but several of the sisters were there. Um, Carl brought his daughter, who is a- almost like she could be sisters with one of my daughters. One of the ones wow. I brought, yeah. I have a, I have a picture of those. Yeah, it, being there just felt like home. Yeah, you know, and I've never been to that part of Quebec. You know, I, I. That's just not, you know, even being from Canada, I that was just not an area I ever went. Well, exactly. But, you know, we we spent the afternoon there. Um, later on, um, our m- mutual friend, Gus, came by with his son and his mother. And I got to meet all of them. And all of them are all related to Joe in one way or another. Big family reunion. Yes. <laughs> It was really, really amazing. And then they later on in the, you know, Sebastian got tired by dinner time and they had to take him home. And then Fonal said, you know, tomorrow morning, we're going to go to Sister Judith's house and have breakfast there. So we had a big breakfast at her house, sat on her porch for a while and just got to know family. each other. Got That's to know beautiful. Got our little goodbye pictures and, you know, little... Wow. Uh, final waves and stuff like that and it's just, just it was just amazing you know it was just really really amazing so and how then, how did you find your husband was reacting after that incident and now coming home he was it was very interesting because coming from being an only child yeah the son of an only child i mean he knew his father's side of the family but he was the son of an only child yeah to being a big brother to so many. Exactly. That was just eye-opening for him. You know, he realized, because I'm from a big family, and my close ties to my brothers and my sisters and my, you know, everybody that I'm related to, he started to understand that. You know, he gotcha. started he started to go, oh, okay, there's something oh, to it. It's all that. blossoming. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was really something that became real. You know, he could only imagine it before. Mm-hmm. But now it was like, wow, these people are my flesh and blood. Yeah. 
you know, and it wasn't in contact with them. Me more so. Okay. Cause I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm the communicator, you know, for him, it's difficult because of the language barriers. Um, I it's can understand just, that. Yeah. And it, it, it makes him uncomfortable trying to communicate mm -hmm. in, in, in a way that you know he has to translate and all of that it just kind of you know well, it, lose, it loses its meaning when you're when it's in translation unless you speak the beautiful language it, yeah. it's like you know you, you really don't understand it when it comes through like a google translate I, yeah you well right it just takes the whole meaning and the feeling and everything right out of conversation Exactly, the, the one on one conversation kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. It took about another year or so when Quebec opened up the adoption records. Um, uh, where, Bill 113? Was yes. 113? Yeah. Uh, it, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I could be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Bill 113, I think. Yeah. Uh, that I, I went ahead and, you know, helped him go ahead and apply for that, you know, mm -hmm. because he was an international adoption. Okay. Um, being adopted into Ohio, it was a different department. Yeah, secretariat, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not 100% sure, but I was given the name of somebody who would be helpful and we went through her. Mm -hmm. And she contacted Joe and said, I have information. I'm going to call you on this particular day. Mm -hmm. And at this time, um, please be ready. You know, her English is kind of heavy accent and her okay, broken. That, yeah. So I was there for the phone call to try to help kind of decipher what all the, yeah. you know, was being said. And she started to say, her name is, and she said the name, and I just went. Oh, the one that you've had, and you're in your imagination of what she should be called. So it was his mom. And like, oh my goodness. Oh, wow. It blew me away. And then she said, you are her third baby. Okay. And I went, okay. And I'm and the kind got of more. Yeah jump in there with questions you yeah. know Joe Joe would hear it and go okay and I went are they alive yes where do they live do they know are, about me? And are they adopted yeah are, are there any more after him yeah and she said I can't give you any of that information <gasps> was there a veto there these people hadn't approached the the uh, agency and said their names could be given yet okay. or they haven't done anything they were still on that privacy thing okay so go okay you're at least the third yeah from her about a year and a half two years later he gets another call from her that i have another sibling for you wow so that's four she couldn't say if it was a male or female yet or any of the information, mm -hmm. but slipped in a he at one point. Okay. <laughs> and Joe goes, okay, it's a brother. <laughs> <laughs> nice how they do that sometimes, right? <laughs> Dental, but okay. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so he finally find, finds out um, the man's name. We've not been in much communication with him, so I can't even say what his name is yet, but um, and he, this gentleman is younger than Joe. And according to his numbers, so this is younger than Joe. There's still okay. two above him. Oh, okay. okay. According to his numbers, there's still one more. <gasps> okay. So there's, there's potentially five. Wow. So is it balanced out, boys and girls? We don't know. We just know about one brother. Okay. And we basically know that there are uh, some ages, some age ranges, but the brother didn't know anything you know, else. No, he just, yeah. he just numbers because that's all I can give you at this point. You know, it's a privacy thing and I get it. 
I know it's frustrating. I get it, but I don't get it. You know, I know. You know, I mean, your existence, your your siblings, your blood, your flesh and blood. You know, it'd be really nice to be able to just pick up the phone and find out who they are. You know, and have the choice that you want to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I can I can understand. You know, Vito's coming into play to protect, in, in a sense, mm-hmm. um, more so parents that have given them up. Uh, I, I'm kind of 50-50 on that, okay? Yeah. I, I think everybody absolutely deserves to know their name. They absolutely deserve to know who, if they have other siblings. They yeah. deserve to know where they were born, what their actual birth date is. Right. And then for me, the remainder of it, DNA takes care of. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But yeah, the 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 vetoes and no information and stuff can be so frustrating. It's like, you know, you, you can see that puppy in the window, you know that that's the puppy you want and you can't touch it. No, you can't. It's so it, heartbreaking. It, and I I guess I sort of get it because you know, women become pregnant in all kinds of circumstances and sometimes they're painful circumstances and they may not want to share that or have anything to do with it. It might even just be that the family didn't never knew. Yeah. Right? So they've they've had or you know, they've had situations where you know, moms have been put under to give birth, and wake up to be told the baby died. Yeah. To me automatically a veto is then placed on their their papers. Right? When they're adopted. Right. So it's like, okay, so I, 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 can you imagine the heartbreak of that parent finding out, doing a DNA test, finding out that you have siblings or a parent that you thought, or a child that you thought had passed? Like, it just, it just, I would have a gazillion questions. Yeah, well, you know, I had a situation in my own family. I'm one of eight children. Okay. Between my next older brother and myself, my mother had a stillbirth. Okay. Um, And they put her in that twilight sleep. She swears she heard that baby cry. Mm -hmm. When she woke up, they said the baby had died. And, you know, I... I bet you that plays on you all the time, right? Time. And it wasn't until I had taken my DNA test, I figured, you know, I might as well do it too. No surprises in mine. But um, I it, I was in that period of time, I had already mailed it in, and I woke up all of a sudden, like, I wonder about that baby. Yeah. You know, because who knows? Because I had started reading about how in Montreal, especially, oh. that there there were babies being black marketed absolutely there's thousands of them mm-hmm. you know? we were told the baby had died and they were sold to like new york city or wherever yeah and i was like oh my goodness yeah. and I, by that point both of my parents were deceased so i couldn't really ask any specific questions mm-hmm. but none of my siblings some of them were in their teens, well into their teens by then. They don't remember a funeral. Yeah. A death certificate, anything like that, a burial place, anything like that. They know that my parents had named her Annette. Mm-hmm. But that name probably, if if she was one of those children, I'm sure that name didn't follow her. But yeah. if I get my DNA back, And like third or fourth down, it's a third cousin named Annette. Her (laughs) feet. It's when the heart goes, oh, hang on. But, uh, you know, it it couldn't have been because she was far away. It would have been a full sibling. Um, You know, I I found two of my full siblings on there, which I know, you know, I know them. Yeah. And they had done the testing too, but you know, Annette would have been in that section, not three or four levels down. But I was like, so, oh. who's left on for your husband to locate? Um, 
any of the other children that his mother had. Um, the I've been in close contact with a first cousin of his. Mm -hmm. There was there is only one living sibling to mm -hmm. his birth mother. Okay. I asked her, you know, if we pay for the test, do you think he'd be open to doing uh, ancestry? Mm -hmm. They talked to him. He's in a nursing home, but he was open to it. He said, absolutely. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful? And he did it. We 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 got it from him. So now we have like this solid trail. Hasn't led anywhere yet, mm -hmm. but we have a trail now that he has gifted us with. You know, yeah. we have DNA. Well, it's the proof. Yeah, it, it's the proof is in the pudding. You've got the pudding. Now you need to find the spoon. Yeah. And it, it was it was a little difficult for this cousin to hear the news that this aunt that she adored, that was always, she always, she described her as very proper. Okay. Prim, very proper, very neat, very tidy. Had had four, maybe five children that she gave up for adoption. And that was difficult. She said, I'm still reading. Yeah, she said, don't say any more right now. I, I, I need to process this first. Yeah. So I, you know, I stopped for a little while and I waited a bit. And, you know, then we talked about I it. I would and, almost want to know what was her circumstances in order for her to have to give up those children? Like, yeah. like did, did she keep them for certain periods of time, you know, or were they just automatically... Or were they taken from her? I don't no. know. Like my heart, I my heart goes out to somebody like that, especially when you find out that later in life, it's, yeah, it's a three sixty. You yeah, know? yeah. In a sense, it, 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 um, sorry, my dogs hear something. <laughs> yeah, it, it's um, it, one of the things I learned in my research, and I'm I'm not saying that this was her situation at all. Okay. Um, was that a lot of times in those days, women from young girls from less affluent families would go work for the more affluent families. They would go do sewing for them or cleaning for them, and farm help or whatever. And a lot of times end up pregnant. And when they ended up, they were sent away. Yeah. Did not work for them anymore because they were pregnant. Um, yeah. usually by one of the sons or the father or something of that nature. Yeah. <laughs> if you hear that puppy, I'm sorry. Lovely music. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and they would be sent away. Yeah. And after they'd had the baby, they can come back to work. It makes you curious though, how many babies of that situation? I know. Right? I know. Because a lot of wealthier families had well, servants. I mean, that that's basically what they are. Or um, like land landscapers and keepers. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't. I would assume they're called keepers. I don't know. Yeah, whatever it was, and yeah. the, the sons and the father, and, you know, whatever they would, they would, you know, visit the girl, and you know, and it was. A, a, shame on her if she became pregnant because of it yeah but i mean what's she gonna do i don't yeah and like i said i have no clue if that's what happened to her yeah yeah I had asked, is speculation yeah i had asked this cousin about it and she goes i don't remember her doing that but then she talked to some of you know some of the fa older family members and said, yeah, she might have sewn for people for a while but who knows this was not something we talked about yeah yeah this was all kept secret. It was all quiet. Um, it's very possible that her ataxia was already pretty well pronounced by that point. Okay. Maybe why she had to give up all of these children. Well, maybe maybe in hopes that the next child didn't have it. Yeah. Or in her body, she had gotten to a point where maybe she couldn't take care of a child anymore. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Her, her brother... Um, one of her brothers also had it. So her mother was alone taking care of two adult children that had this disease to take care of a baby. 
you know what sometimes we'll just never know the stories uh, of you know all these adoptions and the circumstances around them yes history gives a little insight as to what may have happened what could have happened what situations absolutely did happen but when you sit and you think about all the scenarios there are way too many of them way too many and i mean one thing i'm grateful for is this era yeah this era is breaking down the walls breaking down the boundaries breaking down different things and yes it's as scary as it can be for some people mm-hmm. it's like leading others yes it is there's, there's not that stigma anymore about having children and you know young girls having babies it's it's still, you know, not the preferred way, but it's not like, oh, don't talk about it, you know? Well, exactly. Well, not in the majority of the families. I know some that it still happens, that type of conversation. Like, you don't even talk about going to the bathroom. Right. You know, it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> not but like- anyway, so right, so right now with your search is still facilitating him to, to fit all those pieces. Right. The pieces are coming in slower now. Yeah. You know? um, and they're not, there's not much I can do about it anymore. It's all going to depend on other people now getting tested or getting curious or whatever. I've kind of found everything I can. Um, and I, I still keep checking his matches. <laughs> so I, as we round this up, because I mean, we could probably talk for like hours on this, on this. Okay. Um, what did you, f- what tools were an asset to you? Well, ancestry was a big asset. Okay. And community. Community. Just getting, I got onto a Facebook page with a lot of people that understood the background, understood the history of that area, um, understood, you know, Oh my goodness, these trees, <laughs> these trees that just keep going back. So, uh, finding people who could read trees and how they join. And that part of Quebec, the trees keep intermingling. Well, we're all related. What do you want, lady? <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. So I have my tree and my tree doesn't do that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mine does. <laughs> I'm a Leduc. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, if, if you mention that name in Quebec, people go, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there, yeah. There's, from what I understand, there there's two divisions of Leduc. Okay. I'm on one, and then there's the others. So oh, okay. interesting. But I know, right? But well, anyway. There was tons and tons of Tremblay. Um, it turned out La Pointe was the name that, that fit. I have La Pointe, I have Tremblay, Leclerc. Yeah. Um, oh. yeah, the, the, oh, yeah. almost everybody, <laughs> almost everybody has all of those names. <laughs> well, exactly. Cause there's, they're so prominent names. Right. And the, I think in, in, in certain eras and in certain places, the communities are vast mm-hmm. and the, the, they're vast with family. Right. Yes. Right. And they have large families. Exactly. They- lots and lots and lots of family and you know those kids had lots of kids and it just keep, kept on true. and people didn't know that somebody was their second cousin or third cousin and they'd yeah. marry them and they'd have kids you know well exactly and that would make exactly. crazy trees but how yeah. like the ones on the facebook page i had was huge it was so huge will you to be have their guidance yeah will you be Attending uh, the big uh, happening event? I'd like to. Um, to me? I live in Georgia, the <laughs> United States. Okay. So it, it's, it's a distance and it's going to depend on whether at that point I'm able to pack up and go. I'd love to. I'd love to go up there. Well, I would love to see you. I mean, if you come, I, I think this this would be awesome and take one heck of a big picture. Of all of us. 
<laughs> no, we need we need somebody in the plane up there shooting down and going, yeah, that's one big family. You need a micro uh, magnifying glass to see everybody's face. Well, but, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> so until the next time, hopefully there's a next time. I'm Bernadette McDonald, the host of What Is Your Real Name? Uh, adoptees uh, from Quebec, Crush. And uh, it's been wonderful getting to know you, hear your story. And I wish you all the best in fitting all the pieces. Allow them all to fit together. All, the, all of them, yes, eventually. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you so uh, I'm sure we'll talk again sometime soon. We will. Okay. Thank you, Bernie. Bye for now. Bye-bye.